Hello and welcome back to another video. I always forget to do an actual introduction, so um, this won't be any different. I'll just get straight into it. Basically, I have a list of five luxury skincare fails. Three of them I've already briefly spoken about because I made a reel about them um, that I also posted to YouTube shorts a couple, maybe a couple weeks ago, but I'll just readdress them and maybe discuss it a little bit more. Two of them I haven't mentioned before, so I'll start with those. Let me know if you have any feedback, if you have a different experience, because skincare is of course very personal. So I'm not suggesting these are bad products. They just didn't work for me personally. But if you love them, if they've done wonders for your skin, that's something that I'm interested in hearing. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So first I'll start with the Clarins Cleansing Oil, which um, I think Clarins is considered a luxury brand, but maybe not. Um, anyway, I've included it regardless. I was really excited to try this one because Clarins is such a long-standing brand and recently they've been going through a bit of a product refresh um, but I hated this cleansing oil like I don't often hate skincare products but this I hated I was hoping it would be more of like a nourishing style cleansing oil that, that I could apply and it would allow me to like massage into the skin then emulsify and rinse but this has a very, very slippy texture. It feels almost like using a silicone on my skin. So the amount of like slickness that it has is just very unappealing. And for that reason, I don't, I don't understand why a brand that probably leans into naturals would want, would even want a texture like this on brand because it feels extremely artificial. Now I'm not a hater of synthetic ingredients or silicones at all. It's just the feeling of that in a cleanser is definitely not what I'm looking for. It's not indulgent. It doesn't feel nourishing. It's not a nice experience. Um, so yeah, this, I don't understand how it was even approved as a Clarins product. It's probably a bit rough, a bit savage, but um, it just doesn't fit the Clarins DNA in my in my mind anyway. Next is the La Prairie um, Skin Caviar The Mist. Um, I bought this kind of impulsively just because La Prairie, they don't don't do that many skincare releases which is always nice um, and when they do they're often exorbitant pricing but this was for them anyway a more of an accessible price point from what I understand it's limited edition so there might not even be any point in buying it um, long story short I kind of wanted to explore some of the skin caviar I think they've done a nice job kind of blending this out. It feels very hydrating um, while being a little bit nourishing. So if you watched my empties recently, or I might not have posted it yet, but in there I complained a lot about floral waters and how they don't do anything. This actually does have a bit of a hydrating effect to the skin. So there's a bit more of a purpose behind it. Um, and I think they've done a better job of balancing out the fragrance because some of their products are so intensely fragranced, they're headache inducing, but this one is not quite that bad. Um, my only real problem with this is that whenever I apply it to my skin, it's like my skin feels very prickly. So I don't actually visibly see a skin reaction. So I can't see my skin turning red or anything, but it's just very uncomfortable to use. Um, if you've ever used azelaic acid and you've had the experience of that feeling like fireworks going off, that is kind of what this feels like on my skin. So um, I guess this complaint is not about the formula. It's just more about compatibility with my skin. So I, I'm mentioning it more because I'm curious to know if anybody else has tried it and whether it has been fine on their skin and it just feels like nothing. Um, or if it's a common issue to have it feel a little bit weird. But yeah, that's that's all I have to say on that one. So nothing too interesting. <laughs> now the next three products I've already given away so I don't have them to show you. Augustin Esparta The Skin Infusion was another product that didn't work for me at all. So it's super interesting packaging and it felt very luxurious when I opened it. It comes in sort of these three vials that um, two of them I think are refills for the main packaging component where the pump is. Um, and it was supposed to be like a four week uh, kind of like rescue product where you'd use it as this continuous short term protocol to really kickstart or repair your skin. And cause I'm constantly just dealing with like redness and an inflammation issues. Um, although I don't have like extremely severe redness you might be able to see it like coming through a little bit today it's just like there enough to where it, it does 
bother me at times. So the reason I bought this was with the hope that, that it would be that type of skin soothing treatment that would maybe take out some of that redness. But I didn't really even get a chance to try this properly. I think I used it for about a week, but the texture is so dense and so rich. It was kind of promoted as a serum in a way, but I can't imagine anybody using this in a layering protocol. It feels extremely oily, um, basically like a reverse emulsion or a, or a water and oil emulsion. So the opposite of what a lot of other skincare products are. And so it has this kind of like water wicking effect where it felt like it was repelling other things I would put on top. And yeah, I just did not like the application. I don't feel like it was designed for layering at all. But beyond that, every morning that I would wake up when I was using it, I would have clogged pores. So it would just instantly clog my pores. And because of that, I just wasn't able to keep using it to really speak on the results. Um, this product I would only suggest if you have very dry skin and you know you know that your, your skin can handle very rich textures, which is odd because I do, I have used the Augustus Butter Rich Cream. I use the La Mer Cream. I use a lot of Chanel moisturizers that are quite rich and none of them cause problems but this in particular was so suffocating I I just can't I can't understand why it would even be designed as a layering type product but yeah that's really all I have to say I guess if you have any kind of breakout prone skin this is probably not a good product to explore especially considering the price point is absolutely extortionate next up is the Dior cleansing milk and I guess this overlaps a little bit with the issues I had with the Augustinus treatment it's just this product again I don't know that it was designed well enough to be actually to actually be a cleanser um, essentially when I would use this it was a really nice pleasant cleansing experience but during the emulsification and rinsing it just would not rinse off so it leaves a level of residue on the skin that I feel is quite unacceptable. Um, and I use a lot of cream cleansers. You know, Biologique has several, Skin Rocks, um, La Mer again, Augustinus Bada. There are a bunch of cream cleansers that I use and they all, you know, although they're rich leaning, they still ultimately rinse off well enough or they would come off well enough with a second cleanse. The Dior one, I just couldn't even remove with another cleanser after it. So it just made my skin feel really, it just made it feel feel like I was applying like a cling wrap or something on my skin and not that I had issues with the clogging my pores necessarily it just gave me a concern about applying other skincare products on top and whether I was creating a barrier accidentally for those other products to even like get in properly or at least work as effectively as they could be. So especially considering Dior doesn't really have a wide range of cleansers, they really only have a couple in their standard line. This one I think is really targeting maybe more dry skin types, sensitive skin types, people that really want like a nurturing effect but the type of nurturing effect that is actually noticeably left on the skin. So yes, this I don't think has a place like across skin types. It's a very narrow target audience. And again, I don't mean for this to come across like the product is bad because of that. I just don't really believe that people should fight against their cleansers. So there's nothing wrong with cleansers leaving behind a little bit of a nourishing residue, but I think when it feels like a film, then it hasn't been designed properly, but that's just personal pet peeve, personal preference, I guess. And last one I'll mention, which I think I also spoke about recently in an MT's video is the Estee Lauder Renutrieve. I think it's their diamond revitalizing masks. Anyway, I'll throw it on screen. Um, so this is a, is a black um, truffle based mask. It has like glitter particles and stuff in there. So, so it's supposed to be more of like a luxurious style mask that gives the skin a bit of a brightening effect. I did notice some hydration. It did make my skin look quite fresh and bright immediately after application, but I felt like li literally within half an hour, all of those effects would be gone. So to me, this is very much a cosmetic product in the sense that its effects were super fleeting and super temporary. I think the mask is like $500 or something like that. So just speaking on the price point versus results, this did absolutely nothing worthwhile. Um, and unless you just have a level of disposable income where a $500 mask for the indulgence of it isn't a big deal, then I mean, live your best life. I love that for you. But 
I was just hoping for a little bit more of a noticeable skin impact considering I did finish the jar. It's just, it's just that every time I used it, I would feel like I wasted my time applying it because within a very short period of time, the results were non-existent. So I think this is one for rich people only. So anyway, that is my list of complaints for this video. Again, please do let me know in the comments if you disagree. I, it's, not a, it's not my intention to sit here and act like what I think is the truth or like gospel. This is all just about product experiences and how everybody is different. So if you do have a different experience, there's very much something that I encourage hearing about because because if I think a product is bad, maybe I've done something wrong and I want to hear about if I am missing out for whatever reason, or sometimes it is just a skin types thing and people that are more dry will have an entirely different experience with the product than I have. But now I'm starting to ramble, so I'm gonna sign off. Um, have a good day and I hope to see you in the next video.